Hi, everybody. My name is DJ Brazier, and I am the uh, faculty advisor for all of the students in the Master's in Computational Biology program. I'm really excited to have the opportunity to get to meet a lot of you, either at our open house or over the summer, get to know you uh, as we communicate with each other over the summer. And then, of course, when you arrive here at Carnegie Mellon in the fall, and to work with you throughout the time that you're here at CMU, and also to continue working with you beyond your time at CMU as your careers continue to evolve. Today, I wanted to give you an overview of the curriculum for the master's program in computational biology. And so in order to find that, um, you'll need to start by going to our program homepage. Um, so that's cmu.edu slash mscompbio. And then from there, you can click on the tab that says curriculum. And the curriculum has um, a minimum of 144 units in order to graduate. Um, a unit, uh, 12 units is a typical graduate class. Um, some other US universities use uh, a credit system and approximately one credit is, uh, uh, yeah, one credit is about three units. Um, but in any case, um, a typical graduate class uh, is 12 units. And you have, um, these are divided into three different categories. And um, the first is foundation courses. And for this, this is up to 69 units of coursework. Um, there are multiple foundation classes. The majority of them you take in your first semester. Um, and for most students, that's the only thing you're gonna be taking in the first semester is a set um, uh, menu or set uh, series of foundation courses. Um, so the first foundation course is programming for scientists. Um, it's a typical 12 unit class. Um, then there's also a class called algorithms and advanced data structures that is also a 12 unit uh, class taken in the fall. Um, uh, essential um, mathematics and statistics for scientists. Actually, there's a typo on this page that I need to get fixed. It's a nine unit class that's also taken in the fall. Um, and then applied cell and molecular biology is a nine unit class, a 12 unit class as well taken in the fall. Um, and then also taken in the fall is this class, professional issues in computational biology. Um, Philip, uh, my colleague who uh, is in, uh, who is the professional advisor for students, um, has another video talking about professional skills in general and kind of giving an introduction to this. Even though that's a three unit class, that is among the most important um, things that you will do, probably the most important class for your long-term success of anything that you do in your time here. Um, this class helps you build skills and so on. Some of these classes here have asterisks next to them. Um, and those represent classes for which there are placement opportunities for you to place out of them. Um, those are either exams that you can take over the summer or projects that you can do in order to place out of a, of, of a course. Um, in addition to the fall ones, there are two others that are taken in the spring. The first is um, what we call um, advanced quantitative genetics for short. Um, the full title is Genomes, Evolution and Disease, Advanced Quantitative Genetic Analysis. That's a spring course. Um, and then the other is machine learning for scientists, um, which is a core course taken in the spring as well. Um, the advanced genetics does have a placement opportunity. Machine learning and algorithms do not have placement opportunities. Everybody has to take those classes. Then in addition to um, the, uh, the foundation courses, um, there are also three core breadth courses that everybody takes. Um, the first is genomics. There are actually two options um, there, which have sl uh, slightly different foci to them, but either one will count towards your degree, um, one that's offered in the fall and one that's offered in the spring. In addition to that, um, there's a class that everybody takes in the fall of their second semester, um, called biological, uh, it's a class in biological modeling and simulation. Um, and then there's also an automation of, bio, of scientific research and biological research class that's a spring course, typically taken in spring of your um, second year, so the last semester that you're in the program. So in addition to those two sort of categories of uh, foundational and breadth 
core courses that everybody takes. Um, there are also depth courses. These are the elective courses. And so your elective courses um, are your opportunity to go into depth about various aspects of biology and computational biology. And so in order to um, balance those depth elective courses, um, there's a total of 48 units, half of them 24 units. So typically two courses worth of material uh, come our biological sciences courses and another two courses uh, another 24 units would be computational biology courses. And so this ensures that uh, when you finish, you have a background and understanding of basic biology and biological processes in things like microbiology, um, evolutionary biology and phylogenetics, um, uh, potentially neuroscience, um, uh, more advanced molecular biology classes, um, biochemistry and so on uh, from the biology electives, as well as computational approaches to biological data analysis like um, machine, uh, uh, like um, computer vision and uh, biological image processing, um, uh, advanced genomic opportunities, epigenetic uh, data analysis, um, uh, proteomic metabolomic analysis and so on. Um, and so these give you opportunities to go into depth on these uh, other topics and provide as well smaller discussion-based classes um, for you to take during your time here. In terms of placement opportunities, um, you can place out of all of the courses with asterisks here. Um, if you place out of nine units of classes, then that's just waived. And that's how we get uh, from the 153, which is the most common number of units to graduate down to 144. So if you place out of nine units, um, say, for example, um, the essential math and stats, which is nine units, or the uh, uh, quantitative genetics, which is nine units, then the requirement's just gone. You don't need to add anything else. If, however, you place out of more than nine units, so maybe you place out of programming, which is a 12-unit class, um, or you place out of applied cell molecular biology, which is a 12-unit class, or rare, this is more rare, but it does happen that you might place out of both the applied cell molecular biology and the advanced quantitative genetics class. In that case, then rather than just continuing to drop and drop and drop and drop requirements and, and not have to take as many classes to graduate, um, in order to preserve this minimum of 144 units to graduate, what happens is any units that you drop above nine from foundation, you have to make up a corresponding number in um, depth classes. So for example, if you place just place out of just programming, that's 12 units, nine of those go away, and then you have to do three extra units of depth classes. Those can be seminar courses, um, there, there are a variety of opportunities, research internships uh, over the summer can count for three units of credit. Um, if you place out uh, a multiple of these, then you might have to take uh, an additional full semester class. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind, um, the minimum course requirements to enroll in every semester is 36 units. Even if you, only, you have fewer than 36 units left to graduate in your last semester, you still need to be a full-time student and enroll in 36 units. The upper limit is 48 units, which is four typical uh, length classes. Um, in your first two semesters, all of the classes you take should be classes that count towards your degree. Um, there are opportunities to, position, to petition for exceptions to that in the second semester, um, but those are difficult to obtain. And so you should plan on your first two semesters really dedicating toward studying biology and computational biology, and then continuing, of course, to focus on that, but perhaps picking up a few additional skills in your second year. If you have questions about any of this, um, I'm always very, very happy to help, to meet with people, discuss some of our curriculum opportunities, discuss the courses that are available, and so on. And so please um, reach out to me anytime. Um, my email address, you've probably gotten dozens of emails from me already, but it's dbrazier at cmu.edu, and I'm very happy to meet with you anytime you'd like.